Hello guys, welcome once more online and um, my name is Mr. Damilola and in this video we have looked at January 2019 question number um, 31 to 35. Now are you ready? Now don't forget that if you really enjoy this video to click on the like button so that you can get more content from us from time and that will help you in your journey. Now let's look at number 31. Now physics um, number 31 said uh, a satellite is in a parking orbit if its period is what? Now, what happened to period when the satellite is said to be in a parking orbit? Now, equal to the period of the head, more than the period of the head, less than the period of the head, the square of the period of the head. Now, um, for a satellite to escape the head, you know, of course, we all know what the satellite is. Satellites are used for communication and they are used for many other uh, 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 they are for surveillance, they are for many other uses. But generally, you know, the satellite, um, for a satellite to leave the Earth, it must be in a parking orbit. That means it must have, um, let's read through that. It's a, a parking orbit is a temporary orbit used during the launch of a satellite or other space probe. A launch vehicle boosts into the parking orbit, then coasts from a, for, um, coast for a while, then fires a way to enter the final desired trajectory. Now, a satellite is in parking orbit when its period and that of the Earth is equal, and therein lies our answer. Now, when the period of the satellite and that it has to move at a period, which is the inverse of its frequency, it has to be equal to the Earth. That means it, it has to vibrate as a, um, at, a, um, at a period that is equal to the Earth. So that means for you to launch a satellite to space, it has to move at a period that is equal to that of the Earth. Okay, so and therein lies our answer, and that's called parking orbit. You know, the Earth moves at a particular orbit, right? So the satellite to us to sync with the orbit of the Earth in order to be in parking orbit, and that's what we call parking orbit, and that's what um, what um, is our answer. That's A equal to the period of the Earth, not more than the period, it won't be impacting of it, not less and not uh, the square of the period, it's just equal to the period of the Earth. And that's answer number 31. Now let's see number 32 now. What type of mirror are capable of um, producing a parallel beam of light, such as those arising from the headlamp of a car? Now, the kind of mirror, you know, when we talk about the headlamp of a car, we are talking about a specific kind of mirror. Now it can be concave, you know, if you talk about the rare mirror, that's the side mirror of a car, it is convex mirror because it makes the image behind to become smaller, right? That's convex mirror. But the headlamp of a, of a car produces parallel beams that, and that's why this uh, question is asking that, what kind of, um, what kind of mirror produces parallel beams? That's um, straight light beams, that's a um, package of light that travels in straight direction. Let's check that out now. With a picture, I have a picture of the parallel beams are produced by what? Now, concave mirror. When a point source of light is incidental at the focus of a concave mirror, the reflected ray of light will be parallel to the principal as it should. The answer becomes concave mirror. But con convex mirror, when a parallel beam of light is incidental on a con on a convex mirror, the light travel at this pressure. The light travel in a scattered form, that means it diffracts, that means the light spread out. Convex mirrors spread light out, that means it makes it to diffract. Okay, by convex mirror and concave mirror makes it to travel straight. So if um, if straight light comes to a con convex mirror, it makes it to diffract. Why? If straight light comes to a, to a um, sorry, if um, diffracted light or spreading out light comes to a concave mirror, it makes it to travel in a straight line. So the answer to that question is like what you have in a car, you have your bulb in the front of your car trying to shine light to shine light on the road that that uh, that, that if you are traveling at night, the bulb at the front travels and um, shines light from the front of the car and shines the light in the midst of something that is shining that looks and that shining thing is called a concave mirror. So the function of the concave mirror is to make the light to travel in a straight direction to the road so that it can shine straight to the road. So the concave mirror is like this and then the bulb is in the middle. 
and then when the bottle shine on the concave mirror, it travels straight. So the 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 mirror that makes parallel beam of light is simply a concave mirror. Don't forget that concave mirror make parallel beam or light. Okay, so let's see the answer. Um, concave mirror. Unfortunately, the answer is not in the option, and that's how the past question was. So, but the answer to that question is not cylindrical mirror. Is not a spherical mirror. Is is not plain mirror. Is simply concave mirror. And even the option we don't have option D. So the answer is concave mirror. Don't forget, it's concave mirror or curved mirror. But even here we don't have curved mirror because curved mirror can be concave or convex. This is the right answer is concave. But even if they have written curved mirror, I'll have gone for that. But the answer is really concave. Mirror, and that is the answer. It makes life travel in a parallel direction. So let's go to number 33 now. A body of mass 36 kilograms falls through a viscous liquid which offers a drag force of 260 Newton on the body. The upthrust on the body at terminal velocity is what? Now, this question is on viscosity. Now, do you remember any formula on viscosity? There's only one formula on viscosity, and that formula, some of these topics um, um, have one formula and one of such is viscosity viscosity is a topic with one key formula just like magnetism and that formula is very very important that you remember it and i'll show you now with a picture that is the formula you know viscosity is friction between liquid layers so um, we have solid friction and we have liquid friction liquid friction is called viscosity now the key formula for viscosity is that is what i drew there you have a ball or a stone if you drop it in liquid or in water, if you go down right, there are two forces acting on this stone. One at that one, and that's the weight. And it is equal to the force acting upward. The force acting upward is up thrust and drag. You know, weights acting up and downward, but up thrust and drag force is acting upward. So we have W equals U plus F, where W is weight, F and U. Is up thrust and F is drag. This is the formula for any question on viscosity. So we have viscous liquid there. So this is the formula to use. So it is W equals U plus F. But the question says find the up thrust. So you would have to make U this here. So U equals W minus F, right? Now, what's my weight? Remember that W is um, is um, weight, and weight is mass times um, acceleration due to gravity. So my weight is mass. Times acceleration due to gravity. That's, um, the mass given to me in the question is 36. The acceleration due to gravity is always 10, unless you are told um, to use 9.8, but it's always 10. So 36 times 10, that's my weight. Then my drag force is 260. So my weight is 360. That's 36 times 10, that's 260. Minus my drag force in my question is 260. So 360 minus 260 gives me 100 Newton, and that is my upload. Don't forget the formula. Is W equals up thrust plus drag, and it's very, very important for any question on viscosity. It's just that simple. So let's go. So we have 100 Newton as my up thrust, and that is my option D. Okay, so that's it, number 33. And um, let's check number 34 now. Number 34 says, which of the following diagram represent the magnetic field of two isolated um, on like poles? Now, we, you know, Light poles, uh, sorry, on light poles attract. Okay, according to the law of magnetism, on light poles attract while light poles repel. Option C and D are repelling, that means they are running from each other. And so, and that's wrong. It's not supposed to be so. C and D are on light poles, they are supposed to be coming. No magnet, not and star should be attracting, not re repelling. Okay, so C and D are wrong because they are repelling. Then A and B, one of them is still wrong. Now look carefully. Now, do you have any idea which one is wrong? Look at the A, look at the B. Now, the the A says that the south fl flows to the north. Why the B says that the north? Look at the direction of the arrow. The north flows to the south. Now, south is not supposed to flow to north. Okay, okay. Um, we have south flowing to north. That is the is moving from north. Why um why B says that the north flows to the south? Now, actually, the magnetic field flows from the north outward and flows towards the south. So, south is not supposed to flow to the north. It is the north 
that is supposed to flow to the south. So it is from north to south, not from south to north. So making option A wrong and option B the correct answer. Look at the diagram there. We have the magnetic field. Can you notice that? Do you notice something about the north? Look at the north first. It is flowing out from the north and going to the south. From the north, in all the drawing, it is flowing out from the north and going to the south. Now, in the case, in the first case, it is standing all alone. But in the second case, you can see the north and the south, they are coming. They are coming. And you can see the third case, we have north and north. They are not the same. So they repel. It is flowing from the north, but not flowing from the second north. It's flowing out, looking for a south to enter. But in the second case, we have north and um, south. It's flowing from the north to the south. It should always be from the north to the south, not from the south to the north. So that makes option um, 3 and B, sorry, the correct option from south to north. And it is attracting, attracting. Okay, so that is the answer for number 34. Now let's take out number 35. Number 35 is asking about Lenz law. Lenz law is a law of conservation of what? First, let's take Lenz law. What's Lenz law? You must know Lenz law. Lenz law says induce current in a coin oppose the magnetic field creating it. Full stop. That is Lenz law. That means the current induced in a coin. If you have a coin, like an um, electric motor, you have the coin. The current induced in that coin is against the magnetic field creating it. Now, this law, that means there, there is a clash between current and magnetic field. And whenever there's a clash, it says this extra work leads to periodic change in magnetic flux. That the magnetic uh, flux keep changing as more current is induced. Because of the change in the magnetic flux, okay, which makes it possible for the electric motor to work, okay, so um, because of that change, okay, um, current, um, more current is in, induced. That means you will get more current than what you need. It means because of the change in the magnetic uh, flux, more current is created, okay? So thus, the extra effort is just transformed into electric energy, which is a law of conservation of energy. Now, because more current is being created in the in that system, so the more current is being created, which is more than what is needed, so those extra current is converted into electric energy, okay? So, um, and, that's, um, um, and that supports the law of conservation of energy, okay? Now, what I mean is that if you have a system and the amount of current, um, sorry, the amount of energy being created is more, the extra energy that is um, left will not be lost. The extra energy will only be converted. You know, the law of conservation of energy is that energy cannot be created, not destroyed. So, energy cannot really be, be, be destroyed. That means it can't really waste. It will only change form. So, and that supports the law of conservation of energy. It says energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but can be converted. And you know, the extra current in, in this case is changed into electric energy. And that change is called conversion. So because the extra current is converted into electric energy, it supports the law of conservation of energy, which says energy can be created nor destroyed, but can be converted. So Lenz law supports the law of conservation of energy because the extra current created towards oppose the magnetic field is converted into electric energy and that is the way it is explained so that is less law support the law of conservation of energy and that brings us to the end of this video don't forget to like the video if you really enjoy the video so that you can get more content from us from time to time until we see you again next time guys take care of yourself and bye for now